Now it's come to my attention through social media that there's a lot of chatter about games that are currently being released with a maximum cap of 30 frames per second. Now I will admit a lot of those games are actually restricted to the console and it's been years since I've actually played on a console, but even just the thought of 30 frames per second is a little bit strange to a PC gamer. It is not something that we are actually used to, so I thought today we'd actually take some PC games, restrict them down to 30 frames per second and actually see if they're still playable. Now I know for us PC gamers, 30 FPS actually seems a little bit foreign. I mean, that used to be our target many, many years ago, but things have moved on. And in 2023, we're not even looking at 60 FPS anymore. Even the most entry level graphics cards should be able to produce a 60 frames per second, at least a 1080p resolution. But what we're seeing out there in the console world at the moment is many games being released that at least have a decent resolution, but a very low frame rate cap. We saw this last year with games such as A Plague Tale Requiem and Gotham Knights, which both had a 30 FPS cap on the console, even though us PC gamers were actually trying to get some super high frame rates with the hardware that we had. I'm not 100% sure sure why the console world is actually doing this. Maybe they are trying to reach higher frame rates with limited hardware. Maybe the games are unoptimized and they're not playing very well. We all know what that feels like on the PC. Stay, Callus. What kind of name is Callus anyways? Not my fault you forgot to ask Tommy his name. Either way, what we want to know is that our gamers actually having a decent experience and to find that out, obviously we can test it on a PC. We can take a selection of games, limit them down to 30 frames per second and see how playable they are. Now to test this out, we are using our benching rig. For the CPU, we're using a 12700K, which is a pretty decent CPU. It's not going to have any kind of problems with this. And for the graphics card, I've installed an AMD Radeon RX 6600. That is just a random graphics card that we have here in the studio that I tend to test a lot of things with and the software that Radeon actually provide is pretty decent in terms of being able to configure what kind of FPS we want. Now if we head over to the system we can see how we can actually do that. On the system screen we can just pop down into the toolbar, we can open up the Radeon software and we can head to the gaming graphics tab. Now if we scroll down on the graphics tab we have a little utility here called Radeon Chill. Now Radeon Chill if we just enable that will give us the ability to set a minimum FPS and a maximum FPS for all games. Now this becomes useful if we have a game that doesn't actually allow us to cap the frame rate. Sometimes games don't actually give you that option. You have the option of obviously using VSync and we could probably just force the machine down to 30 FPS at that point. But this tool will actually give us the ability to do it. And not only can you actually use it to do it across all games, you can actually have it game specific. But for us, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna lower these things down. We're gonna set the minimum to 30. It's the lowest that it will give us. And we're going to set the maximum to 30 as well. Now the games that we're going to be playing today are not going to be that demanding. So the RX 6600 should be able to cope reasonably well at that. But of course it depends on resolution and the settings we're going to use. And for that we're going to actually aim for a 1440p resolution. That's kind of where the games consoles are actually trying to target. With of course either a high or an ultra setting because we want that fidelity. Now that we've got this saved in here we need to open a game. And for the first game we're going to try something that's not too demanding but it's also quite slow paced. So if 30 FPS is going to cause us any issues hopefully it won't in this title. For anyone that hasn't played this Stray is actually a great game. It is a game that was released in 2022. It's not that long and it was kind of done by an indie developer, but they did a fantastic job. If we head over to the settings and check our graphics options, we can see that we're currently running in a borderless screen. We've got a full resolution of 1440p, resolution scale 100%, and we've got a maximum frame rate of 30. Now this in this game, that should actually limit us to 30 across the menus as well as inside the game as well. When it comes to the actual quality settings, we've set everything to high, which is the highest for this. So let's jump into game and see how well it actually plays. So we are in the game and as we can see from our little metrics in the corner, we are locked to a 30 FPS. We have, currently have a 1% low of 29, which is reasonably okay. It's a good proportion of that average frame rate. And if we just do a little bit of wandering round, we can see that the game is actually quite playable. It looks quite nice. I think the only time that we've kind of got a bit of an issue is when we actually turn the camera really quick. You can actually tell that we're not running at anything near 60 frames per second. It's just not smooth, but in actual fact, if we just move things around more slower, it doesn't really affect things that much. We'll get into the middle here and we'll see what the wider picture looks like. We are getting a little bit of stuttering or at least frame loss as we're going around on top of this roof, which is a little bit strange for the hardware we're using, but it's not too bad, it kind of means that the game is playable and if this is the kind of experience console gamers are getting then 
it's not too bad, particularly on how well the game looks. Now this game is a very slow paced game and as you can see we are losing frames now and again. We've currently got a 1% low of 26 so we've lost at least 4 there and our 0.1% low is around 21. We would actually consider that in the PC world as kind of unplayable really but then we are aiming for very high frame rates particularly with certain hardware. But apart from that the game seems reasonably playable. I'm going to try and get the little cat down to the ground and if we can get him down to ground level there's a lot more detail down there and we'll see how well it performs when we get down. Now that we are in the more detailed lower streets we can see that as things open up we are losing quite a few frames. It's not the smoothest experience but again you could get away with playing this. I can't really see why you would have an issue with it. It just may hurt your eyes a little bit. Now with Stray there is a little bit of stutter on the screen and you can actually tell that it is not anywhere near 60 frames per second. It is definitely running at 30 because when you move the mouse really quickly you get in a lot of missed frames there. Now Doom Eternal is a game that isn't that demanding but it is a very fast paced game. Will 30 FPS actually cause us any issues? If we just pop to our settings here Go to our video tab and scroll down we can see that we're in 1440p we've got vertical sync currently turned off but radeon chill should be taken over we'll scroll down here to ray tracing is off keep going so everything is set to ultra that shouldn't be a problem for the rx 6600 so let's jump it into game and see how well it actually plays now while we're in the game obviously radeon chill is doing its thing we are currently running at an unlocked average frame per second of 30 and we also have a one percent low of 30 as well but there are no enemies on the screen so we're gonna have to test this a little bit deeper into the game even with all of this happening on the screen this game is obviously still locked at 30 fps and to be honest it is actually more than playable i can tell that we are running at 30 fps the screen isn't exactly 100 percent smooth but to be honest while actually running around killing stuff you don't really notice i think this game actually passes the test it doesn't even have any issues with the one percent lows we're still locked with a one percent low of 30 and we've got a 0.1 percent low of 30 as well nothing is changing at all so as we can see in doom eternal which is a more fast-paced game but kind of as demanding as something like stray 30 fps works perfectly fine now i was going to test an esports title because that's pretty much where you're going to see the most pain when you're actually at a low frames per second but it turns out i don't actually have any installed on the benching rig because i don't tend to play esports games and I don't tend to bench them either. I'm more of a single player campaign kind of triple A title player and that tends to be what we actually test on the channel. So instead I thought what we would do is we would try something where PC gamers are actually a little bit restricted and of course that has got to be one of the super new modern titles that are causing so many issues. If you are a PC gamer that has running something like an RX 6600 you will actually relate to the pain because the game that we're going to be trying is of course the last of us part one the game that actually caused a lot of controversy in terms of how well it actually run but let's jump into the game and see what 30 frames per second looks like so we are in the game we have updated it fully it is using the latest patches and we have built all of our shaders for both games the uh, last of us part one campaign as well as the additional content on there and as we can see we are currently in the menu and we are locked at 30 fps so we'll just give that a little bit of a quick reset and we're 30 all the way across Jumping into the options, let's have a look and see where we're actually set to. Now, we're currently rendering at a weird resolution here, but we are down here at an aspect ratio of auto, display resolution of 1440p. We're going to leave VSync turned off because we are limited, obviously, by Radeon Chill. We've got a frame cap, scale zone. Right, we want to turn off FSR2. It is going to take us above the memory usage, but that's fine. We are only limiting ourselves to 30 fps and this should actually be able to do it so we'll apply those changes and then we'll double check our graphics options dropping down to the graphics options now we are set on an auto setting but that's kind of set everything to medium really so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a high setting that has actually drawn us down now under the vram usage for this card so that's good that's going to work perfectly fine if we now go into the game we'll go and we'll just continue from wherever the last time i saved this was and we'll see how well it plays with the game loaded up we are running at 30 frames per second it's pretty much locked all around you can tell that we are running at 30 fps although it still seems quite smooth there's no real issues there but we'll start running the character around we are in a snow here so there's a lot of things going on on the screen but as we go through as we can see everything's locked at 30 fps it's quite a slow moving game where particularly for the character movement and the mouse is actually reasonably smooth and I thought that this would actually be worse than it was 
And for many gamers who actually wanted to play this game, you were locked to quite low frame rates due to the, of course, the performance issues. But we're having no issues at all playing it here. We're moving things around. We're running around a bit. Everything's happening on the screen. I'm not really sure where I'm going at the moment. I'm sure I'm going to get caught by the bad guys at some point. So we'll just wander around a bit, see if uh, putting more people onto the screen is actually going to cause us an issue. There's a guy there with a gun. We'll do some running. We'll run away from him. I'm sure they're going to shoot us and kill us. But so far, the game is actually running perfectly fine. Our 0.1% lows have dropped to 22. It doesn't really give us any kind of major stuttering on the screen. Everything is still reasonably smooth. We're still going to run away from these guys. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to sneak around, but we're going to just uh, oh, jump off the side of a building. Wasn't supposed to do that, but as you can see, the game runs perfectly fine. I think you could get away with playing it at this kind of setting. So that's good to know for anybody that has at least a lower spec machine. And it kind of tells me that we don't have as much of a problem as we thought. Now, what is our final conclusion around this? Well, of course, games are playable at 30 FPS. That used to be our main target. For PC gamers, though, we expect a little bit more, particularly on how much this hardware costs, even at the entry level. The only game that we really saw some kind of struggle in was obviously Stray. That is quite a demanding game, even though it's quite small. And really, it was just in the mouse movement. Actually moving the little cat around was perfectly fine. And of course, in those instances, I do feel for the uh, console gamers out there that are going to be restricted to that kind of frame rate by the developers of the games. Now, let me know in the comments below, do you actually play games at 30 FPS? Are you restricted by your system or by the games that you play? And what kind of experience are you having? Is 30 FPS enough for you or does it make your eyes bleed? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see more. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.